You know, I want to I want to compliment you all. By the way, I'm John. Uh, John B. Wells. Former uh, can't stop talking about controversial stuff from uh, the old Coast to Coast AM and uh, current host of Caravan to Midnight. Dot com. And thanks to everybody who has uh, who's joined the caravan, because without you we couldn't do it. We have no sponsors, we have members, and members are enough. And uh, that is why I am here after speaking with the founder of this feast, Mr. Dane Wigington. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Dane has put just about everything into something like this that you can and still remain on this side of the green. His, uh, he is so dedicated to bringing this truth to the public. And this is where it starts. As I look around the auditorium, it's, it reminds me, a little bit of the, uh, reminds me a little bit of the rebel base in Star Wars. The bad guys, right? They're all slicked out in like Hugo Boss looking uniforms. They are very formidable. They are very scary. And they were defeated by regular folks. Regular folks who aren't on the take from the empire. Now, I guess we know the empire may strike back. <laughs> but so what, right? <laughs> All right, so here's the thing. We're on a tight schedule tonight. We really are. We only have, uh, we only have a certain number of uh, minutes. But look, uh, I want to congratulate you on being awake because so many are asleep. They really are. It's, uh, it's, it's good to be among the wakeful. Very interestingly, I want you to know about this. Um, the, uh, the main man, Mike, the uh, evening news host at Channel 7, had me over this morning. And it was very interesting that we saw, I didn't see, but Ken, our man Ken, K2 we call him, Mr. Keeling, noticed a, an interesting patch over on the, uh, the director's board. A little round patch like you'd put on a bomber jacket or something. And it had a jet going overhead with two white trails coming out of it, and it said, Team Chemtrail. And I thought, uh, whether this is a real patch or whether this is a joke, so many people think that this is some sort of a, a hallucination. They think it's, uh, oh, it's just conspiracy theory. I have another phrase for conspiracy theory. Would you like to hear it? Lie detection. <laughs> lies, 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 and more lies. Pick one. USS Maine, blown up to start a war. It was a lie. The Lusitania, set up from the floor up to get us involved in World War I. Pearl Harbor, I believe it was NBC was gonna run a special on, did FDR know about Pearl Harbor before it happened? I was going, oh boy, I'm gonna watch this. Never aired, never aired. Gulf of Tonkin, false flag, Vietnam. How many do we need? John Kennedy's assassination, Vietnam, the Twin Towers, this ongoing battle in the Middle East, on and on and on and on, lies, 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 lies. Well, there's one way to combat lies, and that's with the light of truth, and that is why we are here. And so it starts with you. Thank you for being here, for supporting Dane, for supporting the truth. Let's get this party started. some people come up and make some statements now. The first, former U.S. military weather observer and former California Department of Fish and Game biologist, Mr. Alan Buckman. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure seeing so many faces out here. 
I've been talking about this for the last 14 years, doing weather observations, testing plants, you know, finding metal and everything. Um, so many people I talk to and try to start a dialogue on this, their eyes glass over and they look at me like I'm crazy. So if you're just starting on this, don't be surprised if you get the same reaction. Now, what I'd like to do tonight is give you some information that I have, my observations uh, and what I know about weather. I want to start right here looking at the picture that's on the screen. Um, jet clouds are really obvious. Everybody can see them. Uh, what's coming out of them? There's been a lot of argument about what that is, but I'm just going to call them jet clouds because these jet clouds turn into other clouds. The jet lines turn into clouds, okay? Most of the time, they turn into high thin cirrus, which is actually the background of the stripes you're seeing in the sky here. You know the stripes aren't natural. If you look at the different stripes, you'll see that um, there are different types of clouds being formed by them. Well, that means that there's different kind of nuclei in them because it takes a particle uh, in the uh, atmosphere to form the clouds. It also seems that they must be making this in a slurry and adding a little water to it, but that's just a guess on my part. Uh, high thin cirrus, now this is a weather fact, uh, high thin cirrus puts a cap on the weather column. It intensifies storms. Um, it ionizes the air column because the particles are falling out of it going down through the air. It basically creates a plasma envelope that we're all living in. Uh, the other part that they're using with this is HARP and it can then send the energy into this plasma field and they can heat and cool the, uh, the air, air column. Um, they can do a lot of things. In fact, I'm always finding new little pieces of information on this, so none of us have this down cold, believe me. And some of it we're having to take information that we're getting, uh, I'll explain that a little bit more later, but um, that indicate what it might be that we're looking at. Um, the high thin cirrus also increases uh, UV burning. So if you're feeling heat magnification, that most of the time the high thin cirrus, it's natural, uh, it comes in with weather fronts. How long has it been since you've seen a weather front? You know, I've been looking at this for a long time. I haven't seen a natural weather front yet. If I see occasionally we have a day, it actually looks like real clouds. I'm not sure any of us have seen a real sky for the last 30 years. And if you're younger than that, you probably haven't. Um, it changes the airflow patterns. It creates ecosystem stress. The stress is basically what is stressing the trees and why we're getting a lot of insect and, and fungal invasion. It's, it's really from that, more than anything. Um, we're getting plant die off. And again, the plasma envelope was really made for use with HARP. I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that. Now, NASA recognizes these clouds and what they do, um, but they have a habit of naming things strangely. The military loves doublespeak, okay? Um, NASA calls them persistent jet contrails. And what they say about them is they trap warmth in the atmosphere and increase global warming. That's an important one to remember. How many days do we go by where we don't have these overhead and are getting global warming from them? And it contributes to long-range changes in Earth's climate, and it affects natural resources. And these things are all true, okay? The only thing is that that's misinformation. They're not contrails. A contrail, by definition, is a jet exhaust that is um, melting ice crystals in the atmosphere. And as it goes through and the heat goes off of it, they refreeze and you don't see them again. So the historic contrail was very short, not more than a couple airplane lengths long. It would evaporate just about as fast as the plane flew across the sky. I don't, haven't seen hardly any of those lately. Now, I sit out in my backyard almost every night. I've got a pair of wolf dogs that I just love. But out there with them, I've been watching the sky and, and what's been going on. And uh, 
they've been, lately they've changed their procedures. I start seeing them about 7 o'clock. Sometimes they run short lines now rather than an entire sky. I know that our areas are all different. Uh, while I wasn't seeing much, I could see, I could see south, I could see San Francisco was getting blitzed. Um, I know that uh, they're doing a lot out over the ocean. It's picking up a lot of moisture. And I don't, I don't know who these scientists are that have been recommending putting salt in this new stuff. Do we want salt on everything? I mean, that's insane. Excuse me, but uh, these people need another job, or they need to hire a biologist to, do to, to show them what the heck's going on in the ecosystem. Almost none of this relates to good ecosystem management. We're in dire straits. This stuff is pushing us to the limit, and I've been really concerned. Um, again, they become the dominant feature in the sky. We started asking the question, well, what's in these things? And I don't know anybody that's gone behind any of these clouds and taken samples of these, and it's almost impossible to analyze something like that without a direct sample out of, out of the vat that it's coming from. So we've had to look at, at substantive information. And so I thought, okay, if these things are falling out of the sky, um, what are they? So all of the rain samples and snow samples, and I've been testing lichens because they're used as an environmental monitor. And lichens soak up this stuff. Um, and so my lichen tests have been coming out all over the Bay Area, the tests I've taken, um, 43,000 micrograms per milliliter of aluminum, about almost 4,000 in some areas of barium. So I'm getting aluminum, barium, strontium, there's lead. I think the lead's coming out of their gas. Uh, but we're getting all these metals. In 1987, uh, we went through the water records, and Roslyn Peterson basically had a, a computer program written so we could even read the water records. <laughs> they, they put these in a format that makes it impossible to just read through and find out any information. So on the program, uh, we found out that it was in 1987 that every drinking water supply in California was contaminated by these same metals. Well, that and the lichens, it had to come out of the air and to have it all happen in one year, um, they're aerial. So what do we have coming in aerially? Uh, we looked at the dust blowing in from Asia. There's a lot of iron and things and going into the Amazon basin. And nowhere have we found any combination of these metals coming from anywhere. So if it's not coming from these huge plumes coming out of these aircraft, then maybe somebody can tell me where they're coming from because it's the most likely suspect in the room. Um, I believe it is, personally. Uh, new and just discovered, I can't verify this either, but a microbiologist in Germany took a lot of, tested a lot of water samples and what he found in the water samples was a new particle. To me, it was a piezoelectric uh, nanocrystal. And it's, it's a scalar crystal. It means it reacts with scalar weapons. HARP was designed as a scalar weapon, meaning it puts out waves that amplify or decrease things. So scalar means it can be either greater or less, and you can, uh, you can control it. Um, this crystal, Apparently, it binds very easily with, uh, with barium and strontium, and that when it falls to the ground, these things will go right into your tissue. They're going into the plants, they're going into us. We're breathing them, we're eating them, we're drinking them. And they, if, as they go into our system, if these metals replace the copper in our cells, then we become piezoelectric, meaning they can affect us with this stuff at a distance. We then are also in that envelope, and that is scary. So I'm going to see a lot more on that. Uh, then I started, I got really curious, well, who's doing the spraying? So I got my telescope out, and because I'm out a lot, and I have a great, I'm at the north end of the Napa Valley is where I live. And I got my telescope out, and I started watching the jets coming over. Well, they're not... I also see the commercial flights coming over. These aren't commercial airlines. They were all unmarked. 
they've started, since we made these comments and been giving testimony, they've been changing, they're smart, they've been changing their procedures. And so you get little variations of stuff all the time. Um, but again, they're not, they're not, these are not passenger airlines doing this. And you look at the grid patterns, it's really obvious that it, they're flying formations and that uh, it's a spray job. It was obvious to me it was a spray job. I got a hold of our congressional people and went, what's going on? You know, I, I did this before I knew anything about this. I, as a weatherman, I looked at it and said, it's a spray job. What the hell are they spraying? And who knows about it? They didn't know anything about it. So they said, well, I found out later, well, they all went to Dennis Kucinich's air uh, when he was presenting the Space Act. They all knew it. They were all very much aware of it. So what's all the big secrecy, guys? Um, you look at... You look at the corporations, NASA is a corporation, the Federal Reserve is a corporation. We just got stuck with the, the Citizens United and McCutcheon decisions and all of a sudden we're a corporate country. Did you know that there's a, a United States of America corporation? This is a fact, okay? They're the ones that are creating all these problems and we've got, right now, it's my understanding from folks I know there's a huge war going on over that very issue within the United States. I'm seeing maybe some hope on the horizon of getting this arrested and under control. So. The Empire. Now, I guess we know the Empire may strike back. But so what, right? <laughs> All right, so here's the thing. We're on a tight schedule tonight. We really are. We only have, uh, we only have a certain number of uh, minutes. But look, uh, I want to congratulate you on being awake. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, Dane has put just about everything into something like this that you can and still remain on this side of the green. His... Uh, he is so dedicated to bringing this truth to the public. And this is where it starts. As I look around the auditorium, it's, it reminds me a little bit of the and, uh, current host of Caravan to Midnight dot com. And thanks to everybody who has uh, who's joined the caravan, because without you, we couldn't do it. We have no sponsors. We have members. And members are enough. And uh, that is why I am here after speaking with the founder of this feast, Mr. Dane Wigington. Yeah. You know, I want to, I want to compliment you all. By the way, I'm John, uh, John B. Wells, former uh, can't stop talking about controversial stuff from uh, the old Coast to Coast AM, and. Uh, Reminds me a little bit of the rebel base in Star Wars. The bad guys, right? They're all slicked out in like Hugo Boss looking uniforms. They are very formidable. They are very scary. And they were defeated by regular folks. Regular folks who aren't on the take from